All right. As part of uh, our uh, adaptive autism therapy, you know, therapeutic misadventures. See, I have the theory that I think that just playing people, you know, old stand-up comedy when they're in the middle of an emotional or mental crisis will probably do much better than some smug, you know, sanctimonious hippie wannabe Tell people, don't do drugs and don't do this, don't do that. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't think you've ever done drugs before. I don't think you can relate. Well, here's the thing. Anybody can relate to Richard Pryor. He is a guaranteed. That, that ends all conflict. You have two people who are pissed off. Make them listen to Richard Pryor together and see if they're still pissed off. Let's try it. I'm going to put the therapy business out of business. And cure yeah, everyone's yeah. mental illness. Everything is five hundred dollars. We rush your prior. What do you want? It's five hundred dollars. <laughs> I said, I ain't told you what. I don't give a fuck. It's five hundred. <laughs> I got these little dogs. They're supposed to be for protection, and they don't watch shit but the dinner plate. <laughs> but two malmutes. A friend gave me two malmutes. They're beautiful, intelligent <laughs> dogs, right? Because they be reading the dog food can and shit. <laughs> Alcohol, no meat byproduct, no soybean. Yeah, this will be fine. Rich fixes up for us, will you? <laughs> Could you have a little wine with that, please? And they like see a burglar, they look like a burglar in the ass. <laughs> a burglar. <laughs> so I bought a Doberman Pinscher, one of them bad motherfuckers, right? Somebody stole him. <laughs> Great name said, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna fuck it. 
<laughs> Come back and say, can't fuck it. <laughs> Mal, you say, well, let's eat the bitch. <laughs> beat him up with a cue stick. You know, get the fuck off the fucking fuck. Get out, leave the horse alone, motherfucker. They got even with my ass, too. Because I was walking with all three of the dogs in the front yard, and I heard one of them say to the other, let's fuck him. <laughs> and dogs, like, if you make them stop fucking, they just go fuck him. Don't do it. I love to see them get locked up. <laughs> motherfucker don't know which way to go there. But whichever way the bitch dog go, that motherfucker got to follow. <laughs> Boy, we laugh on our ass off. And some old lady go out and throw hot water on that motherfucker. That would split them up. I always thought women should have pussies to do that for rapists. Because <laughs> that's some vile shit to take somebody's humanity. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ought to be able to lock your pussy up at least. <laughs> Just have a pussy go. <laughs> okay, we're going to jail. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it turns out Richard Pryor was woke. Way back in 1978, he was woke. Do you feel better? You see what I mean? Yeah, we're going to put this whole therapy business, therapy industry thing yet. They need to reduce their numbers. I mean, because here's the thing. In order for, for all these people who go to school to be quote-unquote therapists, in order for them to succeed, guess what? We have to be fucked up. So, if it turns out that maybe, you know, correcting something is about, you know, putting on, you know, a little bit of humor for them, instead of teaching people to cry and bitch complain and be sad, maybe we can teach people to, you know, handle things by laughing. Maybe that's more productive. Maybe that's more emotionally healthy. Yeah, I, I just don't see this whole great American expansion of, you know, the ther th therapist industry really being to our benefit. I see it as basically being some way for a bunch of interest groups to basically melt the government for money, and meanwhile we suffer more while they get, you know, while they do better. Yeah, I don't agree with that. That's the reason why I'm gonna have to leave Vermont is because that's what Vermont wants to do. Just like there, right there, that there, there was a key giveaway when when the BHA director, Mr. Stephen Murray, says. We don't have a Decker Tower problem. We have a, oh, that's okay. That's your, that, 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 that's, here's the thing. Everywhere in town I go, I hear the same rhetoric. I hear the same propaganda. And here's the thing, what they don't know is I have lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I've lived in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've lived in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I've lived in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. I've lived in San Diego, California. I lived in Redding, California. I've lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I've lived in a lot of places. This place has the least drug problem of all of America that I've been to. Y'all have the least amount of drug problems. You have the least amount of mental health issues other than y'all just being fucking stupid half the time. So this whole thing where I start seeing our public officials talk about Oh, no, it wasn't me. It was drugs that did this. Drugs has always been there. Drugs will always be there. How you choose to act upon it, whether you choose to solve that problem or help alleviate that problem so that other people don't suffer, or whether you decide to prop up an industry that's just going to, over the next decade, rob us blind of shit. If you could just take the money, you would pay therapists and pay contractors to build houses we'd actually solve a lot more. There'd be a lot less people homeless. There'd be a lot less people on drugs. You'd have, you, you would naturally, just by the organic process of building homes and giving people homes, would you eradicate drug problems? Would you eradicate mental illness issues? Would you eradicate people going fucking nut shit crazy and deciding they want to shoot shit up? That will help alleviate all of that. Telling people they need to go and cry to some fucking therapist for five years while they build a government... 
is a con. Thank you. Y'all have a lovely day.